Welcome for all of you to be joining us today. We're super excited to be able to start offering and rolling out our new partner grant funding opportunity. We wanted to take some time to try to pull our partners together to share with you all what our grant program is about and how to go and apply for it. Really, this meeting is focused on you, our partners, and ways that we can connect with you better and so that we can maybe learn a little bit more about what you do and what we can offer at the SWCD to help you in those conservation goals. We're so happy to kick off our brand new uh, partner grant program. This will be our first year of it, culmination of changes over the last several years. So this is a way for us to have a more organized approach to receiving requests from our partners and to evaluating them and bringing them for funding to the board. So we're really excited to launch this and I'm just gonna go through some highlights of it and show you guys where to apply, how to get more information on it. Hopefully, we, if we have enough time, maybe a few questions at the end. So who is eligible? We've got watershed councils, nonprofit organizations, neighborhood associations, Native American tribes, government agencies, educational institutions, and community organizations. We don't allow private individuals or businesses to apply on their own but they definitely can partner with an eligible entity in order to apply for the funding. In the case of these organizations, if they do not have tax exempt status, then we do ask them to have a fiscal sponsor in order to achieve the, the tax exempt status. And um, I'll show you that our guidebook has got more information on, on how we work on the fiscal sponsor. The general criteria that we have for all of our grants is that it advances the mission of our district, which at this time is to protect, conserve, and improve the quality of soil and water in Marion County through planning, technical assistance, or education. The grant would also need to be for the benefit of the people who pay our tax dollars in for us that allow us to have these grant funds. So it needs to be for the benefit of the residents of, of Marion SWCD or within our district. And I've just shared here um, our district map. We do have an area here in the Woodburn to Aurora area that is not within our district. And if you ever have a question as to whether or not that is within the district, just feel free to contact anyone at our district and we can, we can run the GIS layer and let you know for sure on that. So our eligible project types are partner capacity support, and these are to support the operations of entities that encourage people and communities to participate in collaborative voluntary efforts, which advance the mission of our district. Outreach includes support for projects that help entities interface with groups or communities and focus on conservation messaging and opportunities. Education, opportunities that support projects and efforts that demonstrate and or deliver natural resources conservation education. Technical assistance includes conservation planning and the related technical assistance, which incorporate technical design engineering, the technical design for a conservation project, for example, and resource assessment and planning. So that uh, implementation plan, for example, that needs to be developed to put in conservation activities, that would be part of your technical assistance. And then project implementation. Support for ground priority projects that protect, conserve, or improve the quality of soil and water in Marion County. A project can cover more than one project type. And, and when we get into the application, I'll show you that our application does allow you to select multiple project types within one application if your project covers more than one area. Briefly talk about ineligible types of projects. We are not going to support building or capital projects with this, no capital campaigns. We can't support any political campaigns. Um, statutorily, we're prohibited from doing so. If it's a required mitigation project, so if there's been a state or federal agency that's issued a letter of noncompliance, we cannot help to pay for those. With our, with our public dollars. So for this fiscal year, we've got $255,000 budgeted. So under just capacity grants, we've elected to put $50,000 in that pot 
with a limit of $10,000 per entity. So as you can guess, we expect that to be very competitive. In the other four categories, we have $205,000 available with a limit of $35,000 per entity. So combined, if you put in applications for both capacity and in one of the other areas, you could get up to a maximum of $45,000. We are requiring matching funds. So our 25% match is based on the grant award. So not the overall project, but the 25% is on the, the grant award. Can't use other Marion SWCD funds as, as grant match. That's pretty standard. Match can include cash, in-kind, your partner contributions. And we really do encourage you to have partners on your project. The terms of the grants. Capacity grants are going to be one-year grants. And our partner grants are going to be two-year grants. So if you've got an on-the-ground implementation, want to make sure you're really aware of that two-year one there. We do have allotted up to two hours of staff assistance for project development and, and application assistance. Your entity's uh, applications, not our district creating the application for you. We will have funding agreements that will be required. There is an example of funding agreement that will be available for review. And just as a note, we do have non-discrimination. Any of the funds that we give out have to also certify that they won't discriminate. We will have follow-up reporting that will include you know, the standard for grants with financial reporting, progress, and or final report at the end. Our application period opens on Monday, December 18th, and it closes on February 15th. We've got a pretty short time frame to turn this around in our committees. They'll be administratively reviewed, and then they'll be sent to our committee members for evaluation, and those will need to be finished by March 15th. And then we'll have them for review and award at the April 3rd board meeting with funding agreements anticipated by about a week later. So how to apply. Our district grants are applied through our grant portal, and I'll show you in just a moment where to find that directly on our website. And I'll go over it a little bit more when I get when I show you on the web forums where this is at. And so through our grant portal, each organization is a unique entity. So if you're not sure if your organization is already registered, maybe somebody in a different department has already put your organization into our grant system, then just let me know and, and I can look. And I want to make sure that all of our organizations can see all of the grants that are already in our system that you've applied for. On our application form that I'll be going through, you can apply for multiple grant areas on one application. And yes, you can submit more than one application. If you have two like completely separate conservation projects or you've got one that's exclusively an education project and then you have another one that is for technical assistance, and they're just not related, it's okay to do those as separate applications. It can make more sense that way for our reviewers and for how you're filling out the application and, and calculating your budget numbers. And if you have a question, um, maybe you get into an application and you're like, you know, I really need this to be two separate applications. I thought it was going to be one, but now it looks like I need to separate it out. That's fine. Just contact me and uh, we can make a copy of it and then you can go back in and, and rename your application so that you have two separate applications. So if you do more than one um, area or submit more than one application, our awards uh, won't exceed the maximums regardless of the number of applications you turn in. And there is more information in our guidebook that talks about what our grant maximums are. So moving into what does this application look like? How does it flow on a, on a workflow? Everything here that's in the blue color is on all of our applications. So if you start an application, all the areas in blue, you're going to have to fill out. Acknowledgement of the funding agreement, if you're tax exempt, or if you have a fiscal sponsor, your project name, and your grant project type. If you select the capacity support, then your questions in yellow here are the ones that you, you will be answering on the grant capacity support. 
And if you select education, outreach, technical assistance, project implementation, these questions in green are the ones that you'll be filling out on the application. In addition, if it's a project implementation, then we want some more information regarding exactly where the location is, how it's going to be operated and maintained, project design, and some other information on the watershed, any additional information that you want to add on your project, and then just agreeing to the terms and conditions. 